Hey guys, it's Brett. Thanks for dropping by my channel. So it's May. And what an amazing month for books. There are so many things that are being released. I thought I wanted to do a post today on 10 May releases, three of which have just recently come out, seven that will be releasing through the month. When I was looking back at most of these, I would say almost all of them are going to be perfect books for the summer, books to plan to take on that vacation that you might be going on or that staycation you might be staying home for, any of those things. All of those, all of these books I think would work for that. So let's not wait a minute and let's get right into it. All right, so I, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I always like to start with what I'm currently reading. And it's fortuitous that two of the three things that I'm currently in the middle of happen to be May releases. Uh, first, I'll give you the one that's not a May release, which I've almost finished with, with which is uh, Monsters, Monsters, A Fan's Dilemma by, by Claire Didier. This is fantastic. It is a nonfiction book uh basically discussing how we as people rectify our love of a particular artist with the uh horrible things that said artist might have done in their life um she focuses on people like woody allen pablo picasso i could give you the whole list but um it would be better if you just discovered for yourself uh she is a fantastic writer also really, 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 really funny, uh, but uh, it's it's a great, 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 great book. Really enjoying this one. Now, May. The first book um, was one of the ones that I was going to talk about. came out this past week. I have started over on Instagram heading up another big book reading group for the month. We're only three days in, so if this is something, uh, if it's timely and you're seeing this video, in a timely manner, um, and you would be interested in joining this read along with us. Uh, there's about 40 of us actually doing The Covenant of Water by Abraham Verghese. This of course is also Oprah's 101 uh, book pick. I loved Cutting for Stone as many people did, so I couldn't wait to get into this massive chunker. As you see here, I've broken it all down. Um, into 30 page increments that will take us through the month of May and then we'll have a discussion at the end of it. The book is about um, a family that uh, has a curse on it effectively, which is there is a generational curse that um, family members can't be in the water, they drowned. Um, so I'm only about 100 pages in. So it hasn't been explained, and I don't know if it will be, why that is, but it's beautiful. I'm, I'm really into it, uh, and by the comments in the chat uh, for the book, everybody else seems to be as well. I'm also listening to this, which is actually on Scribbit. If you have Scribbit, it's on Scribbit, <clears throat> and Abraham Verghese reads it. And he's doing a fantastic, fantastic job. I love hearing his voice read his own words. So this is great. Um, hopefully it'll hold up. But so far, 100 pages in, loving it. This came out this past week. That's number one. Number two uh, is this book by Joshua Center called Heaven and Earth. Josh Center wrote a book called Still the Night Calls, uh, which came out like two years ago. It was incredibly well received, both critically and um from readers. Um, it, that centered on a man who uh, was, a, I believe, a, uh, a dairy farmer in the Midwest and <clears throat> during the Trump administration who was really struggling to make ends meet. He was, you know, a, a Trump supporter, but really trying to come to terms with how he felt like as a white man in the Midwest was being left behind. Uh, with the um, kind of advancing of the Black Lives Matter movement, with gay rights, with trans rights, all of these different things um, and, and how they affected him. It's a really, really good book. I'm liking this one even better. Um, and in fact, tomorrow I'm going to be um, doing a video with Josh that will be I'll be posting here next week for the release of this. This actually comes out Monday the 15th. This one is about 
a um, a pastor from South Carolina who has one of these mega churches. He and his wife, they're very charismatic, well loved um, in the community. They have a, a, um, a frankly, an international outreach. He's a kind of big deal, and he is caught with a male prostitute. The book takes the perspective of the wife, and it's her story, really, Uh, and it's great. It's great. Um, So I'm really excited to talk about uh, the book with him, excited to kind of find out what the genesis of this was for him, and and more to the point, what his background is. Um, There's got to be a Midwest background going on, and I can't wait to find all these things out. So. This comes out um, uh, Monday the 15th. Would highly recommend it. Um, if you like, it, it would be a great book for a book club because it's very provocative and would clearly bring up a lot of conversation. Um, it's, it's, it's really well done. So there's that. Okay, so the other thing that uh, just came out, which is getting a ton of buzz, and I just finished... Um, Yesterday, I posted my review for it over on Instagram today, which was Chain Gang All Stars. Um, and it's the uh, Jenna pick for the month as well. So you're going to keep hearing about this, and for good reason. Um, this is a book that really examines um, mass incarceration and the prison system in this country uh, and prisoners. Um, it is kind of a dystopian novel. It's been compared to Hunger Games. I actually feel like it's more in line with Squid Game from Netflix, if any of you had seen Squid Game. Um, but basically the construct of the book is prisoners um, can go into this uh, televised game where they can effectively work off their prison sentence in three years by being part of these chain gangs that have these brutal to the death fights. Um, and each fight they win, they keep going up the ladder. Uh, corporate sponsors are involved. It becomes a national pastime that people watch these brutally violent um, matches that are televised everywhere. And these prisoners kind of become celebrities. So I loved what he was doing with this story. I loved kind of the messages he was trying to get across about um, mass incarceration, um, who it really affects. Um, my and, and, and the central story in this is two women who are on the same chain game and this one woman, uh, Thurmer, I hope I have that correct, um, who is weeks away from being released, from being free. And she is in a love affair with this other woman whose name is Stax. And so a lot of the book is about them. Where the book kind of derailed for me was there were a lot of other characters, many of them not even involved in the chain gang, um, who were different kind of factions um, in terms of children of prisoners in the system, uh, people who were you know, related to p- prisoners, had kind of connections to all of this. But overall, I think it's a really powerful book. It just didn't completely work for me. And yet I would recommend it because I think that it's something and based on a lot of other people's responses to it, I think a lot of people will kind of tap in. And I have to say, the segments that involve the two women were fantastic. And that's what kind of kept me really going. So I re- I uh, recommend it with a caveat and I've given it to you now. So Chain Gang All-Stars. All right. The other book that came out last week that um, I'm really excited to read, I don't know when I'll get to it, but I hope to soon, is The Ferryman by Justin Cronin. Justin Cronin wrote The Passage, which I thought was such a fantastic novel. It was made into a kind of very lackluster um series on Fox, which I don't even think it got through a season, but the book itself is great. This one is um, also a kind of dystopian story about a, um, an island called Prosper. It's actually an archipelago, archipelago, (laughs) archipelago. 
It's an archipelago named Prospero um, that's, that's hidden from this kind of deteriorating world. And to get there, you have to be brought over by um, this ferryman. Once you're over there, a lot of your memories are forgotten. So it seems like this perfect society, but it all isn't what it's cracked up to be. Uh, so anyway, I'm totally down for this. It sounds like the perfect kind of heady thriller for summer. So uh, that came out this past week. All right, so next up are two books that both come out May 16th. Both of them deal with identity in very different ways. The first is R.F. Quang's Yellow Face. R.F. Quang last year had the book Babel, which if you haven't read it, it's it's a really phenomenal book. Um, I have to be honest, I'm hugely... <laughs> hugely intimidated by R.F. Quang, because if you've ever listened to her, read any of her interviews, or watched her talk, this woman is so brilliant that I literally feel like a babbling idiot um, next to her. So I, I only say that because I'm like, I think she can really do anything. And after reading Babel, I was like, wow, just genius. And I'm, I marvel at it. Anyway, her new book um, is around two women, uh, one who is uh, Chinese and one who is white, both authors. The, um, the white girl basically writes, you know, very kind of milk toasty white girl books. The Chinese girl has written an incredible, incredible, incredible story about Chinese laborers during World War I. In a freak accident, she dies. And the white girl takes her story and sells it to, gives it to her agent, and they sell it to a publisher um, as her own story and what happens. So it's supposed to be a complete kind of takedown of the publishing industry, uh, which I think is fascinating. Um, but anyway, so that comes out the 16th. At the same time on the 16th, Emma Klein is releasing her new book called The Guest. This, well, I'm just going to read you the blurb from it, and uh, you'll see why I paired it with the Quang. A young woman pretends to be someone she isn't in this stunning novel by the New York Times author of The Girls. Summer's coming to a close on the east end of Long Island, and Alex is no longer welcome. A misstep at a dinner party and the older man she's been staying with dismisses her with a ride to the train station and a ticket back to the city. With few resources and a waterlogged phone, but gifted with an ability to navigate the desire of others, Alex stays on Long Island and drifts like a ghost through the hedge lanes, gated driveways, and sun-blasted dunes of a rarefied world that is at first close to her. Propelled by desperation and a mutable sense of mortality, she spends the week leading up to Labor Day moving from one place to the next, a cipher leaving destruction in her wake. I think this sounds so good. Now, I never read The Girls, uh, Emma Klein's first book, so I can't speak to that. I heard really good things about it, but this, I think, sounds just fantastic. So that is The Girls Out, 516 by Emma Klein. Also, that is The Guest, not The Girls. The Guest by Emma Klein, who also wrote The Girls at 516. Okay, also out 516 is a new book from Samantha Irby called Quietly Hostile. Um, I first became aware of Samantha Irby during the pandemic lockdown and um, her book, Wow, No Thank You. She is so damn funny. These are a series of essays. She is not afraid <laughs> to share anything. She is laugh out loud funny. Um, and if you haven't read any of her stuff, I would highly recommend that one. But I cannot wait to get my hands on this book uh, because I'm sure it will um, cause the same reaction it did the first time. I think she's crazy talented. She's crazy funny. Um, and I love her perspective on things. So if you're into the humor side of things, check out Samantha Irby's new book. Then out May 23rd is Brandon Taylor's The Late Americans. I loved, loved, loved Real Life by Brandon Taylor. I didn't love Filthy Animals quite as much, but again, loved real uh, real life. So 
I'm, I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, this particular one deals about a group of four friends in Iowa City, all at kind of a crossroads, navigating adulthood, um, love affairs, landlords, all the things that come with growing up. I just think he is such an interesting writer. I think he takes uh, such interesting point of views. So he is kind of an autobi author for me. And if you've never read Brandon Taylor, you certainly want to check him out. So that comes out the 23rd. Then uh, two books that I'm going to show these together, which are Stephen Rowley's The Celebrants and Byron Lane's Big Gay Wedding. I'm putting them up, first of all, because they're going to be released on the same day, but secondly, because they're actually married. So um, I don't know if I would love or hate the fact that my book was coming out the same day as my husband. <laughs> Because the pressure is on and like talk about like, do you think that they sit home at night and discuss pre-sales and say like, how many have you sold so far and how many have you sold so far? Um, that's a lot of pressure as far as and even the after sales and the reviews and all of that kind of stuff. That's a tough thing. But whatever. Uh, they're both coming out the same day. Stephen Rowley's latest The Celebrants is about a group of friends, college friends, who reunite every so many years, they had made a pact with themselves, to get together to remind themselves that even though life is crappy and they may not be where they thought they were gonna be at this point in their lives, life is still worth living and all of the great things that come with that. However, at their latest reunion, one of their members tells them something that upends that whole kind of construct. So I don't know what that is, I haven't read it yet, but uh, it's Stephen Rowley, so I feel like you're in good hands. And uh, this is definitely something that I'll be reading before the end of the month. Um, I can't wait to actually dive into it. So that's the first. Byron Lane's newest, Big Gay Wedding. First of all, I should back up and say, Byron Lane, his previous book called A Star is Bored, is also great. Um, Byron Lane used to be the assistant when he was just a youngster to Carrie Fisher. So he wrote a book about it, but not a biography. It's a, it's a, it's a fictionalized story that probably borrows heavily from the truth. Um, and it's hilarious and moving and really, really, really good. And I wish they would make a movie about it and use Meryl Streep and Shirley uh, MacLaine reprising their roles from Postcards of the Edge and do this movie because um, I think it would be so good. But anyway, so that's his previous one. This one, Big Gay Wedding, is about um, two guys who are getting married um, and their mother has said, well, sure, you can have your wedding here on my farm in Louisiana. What they haven't told their mother is she thinks it's gonna be like the small little affair they're inviting 200 of their friends from the coasts to descend on this small town um, and what happens. So um, people that I know that have, or some of the people that I know that have read it already have compared it a little bit to Schitt's Creek uh, with a gay twist, um, but it's supposed to be incredibly fun, incredibly heartwarming. Um, so again, fantastic book for summer and probably a great marriage like I did there with uh, Stephen Riley's book. So that also comes out May 30th. Um, I'm going down. I think that's everything I had for you. I'm checking my list. Yes, those are your 10 books. I hope there's something in there that piques your interest. Maybe I'll try this again in June, although I don't know if I have it such a packed June, but, but I'll look and see. But if you like this video and maybe would like me to do one of these for June, let me know because I am always interested in trying new things. Uh, I hope you all have a great day wherever you are. I hope you have a great weekend if it's your weekend. And I will see you guys real soon. Thanks for stopping by.